Hey guys, today we are going to look at 8 cards that have gone up in price, talk about why they have gone up and where I see them going. Chord of Calling from M2015 is a very good set. It's one of the better core sets and this emphasizes why core set reprints work. There are a ton of them. They go down to very low amounts of money. Here it looks like it's a $4, $3 card. And then it can go straight back up to 20 and then now it's at 10 and climbing. So core set is the perfect place to have a lot of these cards and a lot of these cards have been going up recently. It's a great concept to reprint strong cards and core sets to get people to open packs as well as making sure the value and the cards that may not be on theme are in the set because they are very important for a good meta and a very balanced Next card we will talk about is Leyline. The white Leyline has been trending up for some time. What is interesting about this card is the set, Modern Masters 2015. The entire set is doing very well. Modern Masters, the original one, started trending up a few months ago, six to months to a year ago, and now we are seeing that this set, 2015, is also trending up. It's a matter of supply and demand. Modern has become a very popular format. Frontier is weakened because why would you play Frontier when the cards in Frontier are going up when you can buy cards in Modern when the Modern cards are going down? Because it is becoming a more popular format, more people are picking it up as a eternal format. You don't need to keep spending money time and time again. So it has a lot of appeal, special casual appeal. So Leyline... Pretty good sideboard card. Next, let's talk about original Modern Masters. City of Brass started ticking up. Good card. Something that I would say... There was a point in time these cards were very low. And why we need to talk about Modern Masters now is I believe the point in time has passed from Modern Masters 2017. If you need to pick up your land, if you need to pick up your enemy Zendikar lands, now would be the good time. I mean, it would have been a good time a, a few days ago or two weeks ago, but now it's a good time. I don't see supply being... Supply is still very strong in the fact that many stores and distribution networks all have a ton of these in stock. Eventually, it will run dry, and this will become a very good set. Not today, but in the future. Maybe a year from now, it will be do very well. So Modern Masters, all these sets eventually go up in price. Now, I want to talk about the spiking and whether or not a spike holds and how to know if it's actually a valued, a valued spike. So we see this graph, the card goes up to 15 and now has been going on a trend down. So it jumps from 5 to 15, and now it is at 10 or slightly at, above it at 11. One of the things that you really need to look for when you are determining whether or not a card is for real is to look at how fast it's going to go down. And as you can see, the blimp, it's going down quite fast. A lot of times when a card spikes, you do not want to buy into the spike. You don't want to be... the person holding the bag. You want to wait and wait and wait. Then if the, the card is actually legitimate, it will spike again. Very similar to Death Shadow. Death Shadow has a very interesting chart. Talking about M15, as sets start to get older, the sets like M15 start having more value in them and they start trending up. So Orgbog is a $13, $14 card at a rare Call of court or Cord of Calling is also a 10 plus dollar rare. That's very good for a core set. That is super great for a core set. It's something that not many sets have in the rare slot. When we look at any of the recent sets, outside Walking Ballista, there's not that many rares worth over $10. But for these core sets, there are. And that is where the value is lies the value does not lie in the mythics necessarily because they're hard to pull it relies on the rares including the foil ones the foil rares are very good in this set 
All right, moving on, Spirit Link. Uh, I did want to mention a unstable graph. As you can see, it is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It is a constant uh, realignment of its prices and something that I would not rely on too much. The stock on this card is very low and that explains why the movements are so spiky. One of the other things I want to mention about this card is the Europe price has also gone up. That is an interesting trend to keep your eyes on. A lot of times when American card spikes and the European card does not go up, that's probably an indication that there's not real depth demand, just inflated demand in the US. But if the European price catches up a little bit, there might actually be real demand because there's demand everywhere. So Spirit Link, very cool card and one of my favorite cards to talk about just because there's so much action going on. Look at the spike and then crazy. All right, Future Sight. Wow, 1350. Ooh. As you can see from the chart, this card used to be a dollar, maybe two dollars, and has slowly and steadily, nah, it's actually spiky, gone up in price. Uh, one of the reasons is because Gataxian Probe is banned, and this is the next Gataxian Probe for Death Shadow, which is tier one. Do I expect a Death Shadow banning soon? Possibly. Um, if Wizard Coast cared more about Modern, they would have banned it already, but because Modern doesn't make money, they're okay with having Modern have a Tier 1. They want Standard to be super exciting and diverse. Diversity is a big plus for them in terms of decks and people who uh, go to your local game store. But for Modern, Tier 1 decks are fine for now. For now, at least. And to wrap it up, Drop of Honey has gone up from, I think, 50 bucks to 180 or something. Something ridiculous like this. Drop of Honey, as well as most cards from Arabian Nights and things of that nature, there was a time that you could have got this for sub 50. Now it's 180. Pretty crazy card movement. Uh, one of the interesting parts about this particular card, uh, Drop of Honey, isn't really due to its power level. I think it's it's a good card, but people are very they very much value as a collector's item, and because they're collectors, because there is a white version of this, I believe, and it was printed in I want to say planar chaos where everything was reversed. Maybe it was like it was a different color version of Drop of Honey. It was slightly different. That card is like bulk. Well, it's maybe a little bit above bulk but this card the card definitely is not 180 dollars so reserve list plus old card equal money there you go in a nutshell mtg finance in a nutshell anyway that is it leave me a comment below bye guys